my name is Mark. I work at Agape Red. I've been uh, doing mobile development for, I guess we're close to four, four years now. Um, I just uh, realized that like my, my background theme like really clashed with my color, so like I changed like a lot of sizing like last minute. So if this doesn't look pretty, yeah, that's why. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, so. They mentioned Nebraska Code Conference. I'm giving the same talk at Nebraska Code Conference. I know a lot of people here, so I figured this would be a good way to kind of get, me, get myself warmed up. Um, and uh, so um, just anything, any notes that you guys have, anything you need to change, add, something that was really boring, something that you want to know more of, just let me know. Because you know, I'm basically doing this just so I can tell people about the gospel of Android. So if you want to, if, if any notes, feel free to give it to me. Um, yeah. But uh, let's, let's get this started. So things I'm going to cover, um, why you should develop for Android, what do I need, pieces in an Android app, creating the UI, Intense, and Gradle. Um, I'm really, um, I, from what I've heard in the past, that Nebraska Code Conference is really .NET heavy. So I wanted this to kind of be uh, you know, super, super beginner level. So that's why I've been, trying to, I've been pushing it out on Twitter, trying to get people to come out here, which is the biggest turnout I've ever seen from a meetup, I'm pretty sure. I, don't, I need a confirmation about this is the biggest turnout for mobile yes. meetup. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, thank you. There was never any iOS talk that was this big. I, I agree, <laughs> I agree. We actually turned people away downstairs because we thought we might run out of beer. <laughs> I, I believe it, but uh, yeah, and uh, if we need to start an Android talk uh, meetup, just let us know and we can get that going. <laughs> All right, so. All right, so uh, why should you develop for Android? And just to be specific here, I'm talking about develop for Android. Why you should buy Android devices and use them is a different talk, a different topic altogether. This is just why you should develop for Android, right? So um, the very simply cost. Sorry, this is really small. Like I said, font sizes. I'll fix it. But, <laughs> um, but uh, cost. So um, to develop every year um, for, well, to develop for Android, all you need to do is have Android Studio, which is for free. And you can develop on it on any platform. So you can de develop develop for on Linux. You can have a Mac machine. You can have a Windows machine. All you need is generally like two gigs of RAM, a decent processor. You're good to go. Um, uh, another another cost as aspect of that is um, to get on the App Store. Um, to if you want to be a Google developer, you pay 25 bucks for life, right? Um, for the other guy, it's 100 bucks a, uh, every year, so that's that's it's, it's a big deal if you're if you're starting off. Um, I think that's a lot of money, and that's that's one of the reasons why I think it's important to develop for Android. Language, um, Android doesn't have its own language that it's written in. Uh, you can use Java, which um, some people here have said they've used Java before. You're half of the way there. Um, so um, there is, there's other languages you, you that, that well, others, there's other platforms that are helpful to know for um, Android, but Java is the is the main part of it, and that's a that's a big deal. Um, user base is one thing. Um, you always see on uh, the internets about how what's you know the newest uh, quarterly report of what came out of who uses what, when, and why, and uh, I'm gonna talk about that here next. So the U.S. smartphone OS sales share in Q4. Yeah, that, that's all there. Okay, cool. So uh, yeah, font issues, but I fixed it a little bit. So um, Q4 um, of last year was the first time. That, it doesn't say 2014, does it? Um, but uh, in Q4 of last year, it was the first time that um, iOS outsold Android in, um, since 2010. And they beat them out by 0.1%. And this, uh, remember, we're talking about smartphone OS sales in the US, right? And in Q4, which is when iOS releases their devices. So it's, that's very specific. I have a question on that. Very specific. Is that, I thought that was Samsung. Is it, nope. it's all of Android? All of Android. There's a, I'll put this out on our, on our meetup so you can look at the link, but it's all there. So now we're going to talk about the worldwide smartphone OS sales share in 2014. So the entire year 2014, not just when um, certain, certain manufacturers release phones, looking at 83% for Android, 12.9% for iOS, and then the rest of them. So 
it's, uh, it's you know, the, the, I just point this out because Android, while you're developing it, will remind you about things, about how to internationalize your app. And if you, if your app idea is possibly something you can make, make useful internationally, do it because the market share is there. You know, why not? So, like I said, what I need Android Studio, I kind of, I pretty much talked on that. Um, if you down, if you try to um, make an iOS app, if you don't know, for people here that are new to development, if, um, you have to have an iOS, uh, a, um, a a machine running um, Mac OS. So you are limited to Mac devices if you want to develop for um, for Apple. Um, you are not on Android. Um, you need an Android device, kind of. Um, I say that because Jenny Motion is, I, th I think it's called Jenny Motion. Somebody else said Jenny Motion earlier. Jenny Motion, sure. Maybe wrong. <laughs> GIF, GIF, right? But uh, <laughs> it, basically, you don't, you don't, you don't really need an Android device, but it helps a lot. Um, uh, Jenny Motion works, but it's not great. You're basically running, running a VM, and um, mine will crash every hour or so while I'm running it, so it's not perfect. The uh, simulator for that's built in Android Studio works. Again, it's not great. It's super slow. So if you're going to do it, at least use Jenny Motion. If not, definitely use an Android device. So yeah. OK. So I'm going to try to do a little bit of live coding here, and we'll see how that works. Um, again, if this completely bombs, I will not do it under basket code. <laughs> but uh, but uh, um, so. Um, the general pieces of an Android app that you need to be aware of are the, uh, the first, first off is the Android manifest file. Basically in that you keep track of your activities, which is like um, the, your Java code that is basically uh, doing a thing. It can be like, oh, this is what I'm, how I'm doing with my users. This is how I'm doing with like my credit cards or something. It's just basically a way to separate out how your app works and it's what you like manage uh, like different views of your app. Um, but also um, in the Android manifest, you deal with uh, um, um, permissions. So, like if your if your app needs to use the camera, if it needs to access local sh storage, external storage, internet, um, all that stuff's there. GPS, um, yeah. You have a Java folder, which is where all of your the your most of your life will live is where your activities are, where you're, where you're dealing with your real Java activities, fragments, stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to completely go into what activities and fragments are and all the stuff is here because it's it's a little in depth and I'll just I'll just kind of leave it at that for now. But I might add add more to it if uh, people are interested. But um, so you have your res folder, which is basically where you set out your your layouts. So you can it's where your XML lives, and your XML is how you lay out um, how your view actually looks, how it's arranged, how you style it, things like that. You have your drawable folder is also in the res folder, which is where you can make custom shapes, like layers. So um, real quick, I, I worked for a company where they had, had a graphic designer that was really specific about how he wanted things look. And he wanted a, a uh, linear gradient, and then a radial gradient, and then another linear gradient, and then an outside um, shadow, and then an inner shadow. And that's where you're going to live for a while is in custom shapes and layers and images and stuff. And it's not fun. Um, but that's, that's where you do that kind of stuff. Um, if anybody here is a graphic designer, it's not easy to get that stuff to work in Android. But uh, that's where that is. Um, and your values folder is where um, your styles live. So it's not exactly like CSS. It's not, it's not close to what CSS is, but like you can inherit from other styles. You can um, you know, style your button a certain way and say, OK, I want my button to look like this. I'm going to have code examples for a lot of this stuff. So if it's, if it's hard to understand, I'll, I'll probably try to break it down to you for a little bit. Um, dimensions XML is where you can uh, keep your, your uh, constants for different dimensions. It's a big complaint that people have about Android development in general is fragmentation, which is like there's a lot of different things you have to keep in consideration, like different OS versions, different, um, different sizes of devices, manufacturers, et cetera. Um, mainly, you deal with a lot of that in the values folder. You can say, oh, I have this. 
I have a, um, a phone that's only running this OS version. I only want it to render using this dimensions uh, file so that your, your, all of your padding and your, and your margins will be the same width. So it's, uh, it's a way to kind of uh, drill down into specific um, uh, manufacturers and different OS versions and just be specific that way. Um, the strings XML is how you deal with like internationalization. Whenever you specify a string, it'll tell you, hey, you should probably put this in your strings XML. So you reference it there. So you have all of your strings referenced under certain aliases. And then you put in like your English version. And then if you want to internationalize it, you can send your strings XML to Google and say, hey, translate this. It's a service, and uh, I'm not sure how much it costs, but they have actual um, people translate that for you. They'll give you back a strings XML file so that you have an international represented app, which is pretty cool. Um, Gradle. Gradle is pretty complicated. Um, it, I, it took me a, a bit to understand it, understand like what it's really doing for you. But once you understand it, it's super powerful. Basically, um, it's a build system. And uh, we'll talk about that a bit here. Let's go on to the next part. OK. We're going to try to do some live coding here. So uh, we're going to create, e create some UI. We're basically going to add a button. We're going to style it up. I'm going to hook it up in Java. So we'll see how this goes. So I here, I am here uh, looking at the beginning of. Oh, let's make sure I have my. Okay, let's do that this way. So this here is what Jenny Motion kind of looks like. You're basically running a, a VM of a lot. You can run it. You can you can emulate a lot of different types of devices. Tons, tons of OS versions, uh, uh, dimensions of the devices, they're all there. It's free, so yeah. If you don't have a device, it's good. It's it's way better than the the one that it comes with. So this I'm gonna. Is, so a point about this too to mention too is this is a full emulator. So this is actually like a VM that's running Android. So your you should still have a device, but you're much more likely to actually catch problems that are going to happen on a device in this versus like iOS that only provides a simulator where you have to run on a real device because you're actually recompiling. This you're gonna run your full code in a fully, you know, in a virtual machine basically for what it is. Every manufacturer may or may not implement Android exactly perfectly right when they Oops. tie it up to their hardware. So you still kind of need hardware to test, but this Jenny Motion really does a pretty nice job. It takes a little bit to get it kicked up, but once you get it kicked up and started, it's relatively quick and relatively fast. So, why is it better than the emulator that comes with Android Studio? It's faster. <laughs> yeah, it's just a speed thing. It's really yeah. the difference. Yep. The stuff, the like base Android emulator is really slow. Mm -hmm. It's pretty frustrating. Sorry, I'm getting. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's extremely frustrating. <laughs> 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 yeah, jetty, jetty motion still can be a little frustrating, but. It's still a little slow, but it's a world better than the built-in one, so I wouldn't even bother with the built-in one. I go to Jenny Motion or there's so another say one. emulator, Jenny Motion, actual device is kind of the order. No, of don't worst, use the emulator. Worst, well, I mean, oh. worst <laughs> the yeah, worst emulator best, is yes. the uh, worst option, Jenny Motion device. Yes. Okay. And the device is, is great. You just can't always you don't have enough devices to get different right. screen resolutions and different OSs and all that kind of stuff. So this can help. Mm -hmm. You sh you should have a device to do Android development, you need at least one device so you can kind of see it, play with it, touch it, feel it the right size, and all those kind of crazy stuff. But Jenny Motion is a great substitute, so. Yeah. Uh, also, I confirmed it is Jenny Motion. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like J, they said uh, Jenny Motion tweeted it, J-E-N-N-Y. Oh. Or, yeah. I believe it is running VirtualBox behind the scenes. Yeah, so right, is, right, right, right. So you have to install VirtualBox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I have a little example app here. Just so you know that this is when you first create a, if you go to Android Studio, say new project, this is what you get. Just so you know, like this is uh, very, it just shows you the, your, your action bar here. It gives you a simple um, uh, action there. And that's all you really have. So we're going to try to see if I can, I've lost my, OK. So first, we're going to look. And I'm going to try to um, just show you real quick about the things I just mentioned. 
So we have, yeah, in presentation mode, it kind of garbles things over here, which I realize, but I don't think there's anything I can do about it. Um, so you have, Your manifest here, which basically, like I said, outlines your activity. This is like the main thing, the main main action that you're doing in the app. And this is my main activity right now. You specify your icon, your label, your theme. Your theme is generally how your app looks. And it's referenced in your style sheet there. You can see that. Um, you have your Java stuff over here, which is my main activity. Um, you have, and, and it gives you a general um, idea of how your app should be laid out is just your, your on create is when you kind of um, specify your views and um, I guess it get, kind of gives you just some boilerplate code of making that first uh, menu item. Your res folder is here where you specify your layout. So this is how my layout work, looks. Um, so I have a relative layout with a text view inside of it. It just says hello world currently and uh, you can see how um, it looks, it's, it's grayed out right here, but if you click on it, you can say, oh, it's referenced in my, sh in my string. So if you control click on it, you can, sit, you can see where this is referenced in your strings XML file. This is where, where I was talking about the internationalization part of it. So anytime you write a string that is visible to the user, they want you to specify it here so that you can make it international, internationalize your code. Um, let's see. This is where your values live, and your uh, so this is all your just all your values that you can specify for like the the, the uh, dimensions, and then your style sheet is over your style is over here. I keep going style sheet, but it's not really that close to a CSS style sheet. So this is my general theme, which is like I said, there's nothing here because this is what it looks like when you first make an app. Um, there's this design view that um, Android Studio gives you. Um, you might want to like look at it and be like, oh great, this makes it look make it be really easy to use. Um, it works to an extent, but uh, once you start you know adding a lot of things to it, it it gets hard to maintain. It'll start throwing a lot of errors at you. So pretty much, I I just look at this uh, XML view. So this is kind of way XML looks like. Um, you. This is where you can specify your buttons, your, um, all the different types, you know, list views, your, your, your uh, grid views, all, all that good stuff. So I'm going to try to make a button. So I'm going to specify an image button. I'm going to say it wraps content. Um, Android Studio is really, really legit and how it gives you all of that. I just basically, what, hit, the, hit keys like four times. And I, and I can make an image button. Image button. Um, it gives you a lot of help. So I'm going to say this is, um, I can say wh where, where it gets its image from. Um, Android comes with some like standard uh, icons that you can use, but you can use this Android folder right here. So I can say I want this to look like um, maybe an, an add button. Drawable. Oh, drawable. And then an add, an add button. So now it'll look like an, like, an, like an add button that comes standard with the Android SDK. Um, you can you can uh, specify the text size, the text direction. Android Studio gives you a lot of um, completion, which is awesome if you're starting out. Um, I think this should sh be good enough to show what this button looks like. So if we try to run this thing, You specify where you want to run it from. I have my uh, my tablet up here connected as well, so it's showing that. This is Jenny Motion right here. I have a link to um, Jenny Motion in the at the end of this slideshow, so if you want to look that up, you definitely can do so. Yep. So I have this. Pretty sweet. Um, let's look at. Uh, <laughs> So um, another part about it was so that's basically like uh, just really generally what XML looks like. We'll look at how you if you want to um, actually make it do stuff in your JavaScript. There's not JavaScript, your Java code. Sorry. Um, so let's call this in. Well, let's do this on the on the on resume. In your activity lifecycle, you have a lot of different things, a lot of different uh, lifecycle methods about how, when and where you're supposed to do things. Generally, in the on create, you want to just uh, initialize where um, initialize your XML, and then on the on resume, you, you like, specify the data and stuff like that. But I'm just going to kind of make this quick and dirty. 
we'll call this the add button equals um, Oop. And did I, I didn't give it a name, did I? So I didn't specify an ID for this image button, so I will call this the, or the add button. So now it has an ID of the add button. Go back over here. Didn't bring me back to where I wanted to be. So now it'll recognize that I have an add button. And then I can say add button dot set uh, uh, on click set on click new on click listener. So if I wanted to do something when I click on it. So um, yeah, a lot of um, completion that Android Studio does for you. Um, if you if you know Java Java, um, it kind of just it, a lot of stuff comes with it. Um, you can over it, basically what I'm doing here is overriding the onclick method of the uh, onclick listener of this button that is created, and now I'm going to do a little toast. Mark, can you mention about R? Yeah. Oh, yep. Sorry. Um, so basically, it's a resource. Um, there's a lot of different types of resources. There's drawables. There's layouts. Um, uh, yeah, the Android OS basically m recognizes when you call something an ID that it'll. Uh, It'll recognize that you're trying to use it as an ID. So over here, I said, oh, this is an ID. I specify the ID of the add button. I can come back over here and reference it here. And uh, yeah. So anything that you declare in XML will be referenced via that R object. That's your, your top level object that holds all of that stuff that you actually put in any of your XML files. Yep. So we want to do. Um, shoot, forget the syntax. Um, um, let's do. So um, toast is basically a little message that'll pop up, just like toast out of a toaster. Um, so you, you, it's a, it's an, it's yeah. I, I looked that up because I didn't know I, I, I didn't know why they called it that. <laughs> but uh, so you you say oh I have a toast object. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reference some uh, text to it. it. Get you always in uh, Java. You basically need a context to reference it from. So I'm saying main activity, which is this object that I'm in up here. And I'm going to say the, sh the text that it should show is hey. And it should be around for a long time in the toast world. And then I'm going to show it. <laughs> Jenny Motion. What's up? So, so basically, um, generally, the way it works is on the onCreate, you want to uh, specify like where your object, your uh, your view is going to be, and then yeah, you can do some initialization initialization there as well. But uh, on the onCreate, uh, basically, yeah, basically, you just want to initialize your objects, and then on the onResume is when you want to put stuff inside the objects, essentially. OnCreate is only going to be run one time for your application when the app when the operating system starts it. And Android's going to put stuff in and out of context whenever it feels like it needs to. So based on memory usage and resources, all that, it may kill your app. So if you hit the home button, go back to your home screen, your application didn't die necessarily. May or may not have. You have absolutely no idea, really. 
and when the res when it needs enough resource, it'll clear it out. So if it needs to restart that application that's not running anywhere in memory, then the on create is called. So that's only going to happen one time in its life cycle. The on resume will happen every time that your application comes back to the foreground. You're going to get an on resume. So you don't want to do something in on, on create that only ties buttons together and you don't put text in them or don't do any of that. If you do that in on create, when it comes back to resume, that, may never, that won't happen, even though now the view is coming back and it needs to be re-rendered. So you need anything you need to render the view basically needs to happen at minimum in on resume. There's other places you could possibly put it to based on lifestyle conditions, but that's the major. So every time you like bring that back to the foreground, it's gonna like rebind that click handler and every like completely rebuilding the activity? Every time you change from activity to activity, uh -huh. that's going to happen. Okay. So we're talking about a single activity application here. Yeah. So you're simple. not gonna leak it's not it's not excessive, it's just required. Well, if, if, you, both. if you want it to happen <laughs> only once, you could actually put it on the on create view. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want it to happen once, and then you can define it in a private variable up top, but it's a little bit more complex when you do right. that. But yeah, if you want it to only find it once, then it would. you could do it on, on a create view. Uh, but it's not that expensive to just rebind it. I, I'm not sure. Okay. I usually do it on well, typically, um, this line right here, I would do on the on create, and then on the on resume, I would I would set the on click listener, just because um, just just like you said, I don't want to initialize this object too many times or um, yeah, right. But um, yeah, so people saw, yeah, I have a I, it says hey, because that's what I did. Um, so I think if I remember right. Okay, let's go back to here. So um, yeah, so I basically add the simple style of just adding adding the the sort the uh, the image to it, and that's that, that was basically just a simple example of how you create UI in uh, Android. Um, let's see what we have next here. Okay, so um, a little bonus thing I have here is supporting different OS versions. So I'll show you how that works. Um, somebody told me somebody told me at work that it'd be a really good idea to do this like uh, cooking sh cooking show style. <laughs> so you have like code examples ready. So let's see if oh wait no I think it's number two. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, so if I go back to, this is where I need to be, yep. I wanna run this thing again, Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so um, you see this button down here? Um, you see how it kind of does that like circle-y thing when you click on it? So that is specifically um, something that works on uh, the newest version of Android, right? Android 5.0. Um, it's a material design. It's a, a it's a cool thing that they got going on. It's called Ripple. So this so um, something I mentioned earlier was like fragmentation, right? So there's different OS versions, and uh, you have to sometimes do different things to different OS versions. So say that you want to support 4.0 for 40 forward uh, up till um, 5.0, and uh, you don't have this option, right? So this is something that is only limited to 5.0 forward. So you have to sometimes write code twice, and it uh, it's a it's a uh, it's kind of a bummer sometimes, but if you know how to do it, it's not that big of a deal. So I'll kind of show you how that works. So um, in your, so you, you you basically support it two different ways. In your Java code, because you, you need to, you need to be able to do it in your Java and also in your XML. So uh, the way this looks is you can 
check to see what the build version is. You can see if the SDK is you know, greater or equal to Lollipop. So I know that whenever this code is ran, it's only going to be stuff that's on Lollipop, which is the newest and coolest stuff. So it, these, these uh, APIs right here are only available to people, to the people who are running this phone on Lollipop. So this, that's basically how you do it. And then if you want to implement some other things, like an, an, an older feature, you hit your else, and then you do it another way. So the way you handle this in your uh, XML is you specify difference. I think it looks better on this view. Does the backwards compatibility library do anything from the two it, it does. Um, basically, it does, but uh, I was just kind of showing about how you do it, gen do it generally. Yeah, because this is how you do it if you're going from, you know, if you're going back to KitKat or, you know, Jelly Bean or whatever. Yeah, but but that 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 does work. Um, so when you want to support different things in your XML, you set, you specify different layouts or different drawable folders for that. So if you look here, you can see that I have. Sorry, it's kind of smaller, but it's as big as it's going to get, I think. Um, so you have different drawables for different. Uh, pixel densities for different devices. So this is high density, medium uh, density, extra high density. Um, and these uh, assets that are within, the, within each of these are different resolutions. So whichever device that downloads your app will only download the folder that corresponds to it. So your, apps, so your pictures will look crisp and good on the different um, resolutions. So it, it kind of works the same way when you're specifying different OS versions is you create a new, uh, so like I said before, um, the way it was before, I only had one layout, right? I had one layout, which is the activity main, and uh, it, would, it would look the same all, on all OS versions. But here, I have um, another folder that I've created. So basically, what you do is you go in here, and you say, I want to make a new resource directory. And you can specify, OK, I want this layout folder to only be used on the API versions of such and such, which is for, um, for Lollipop, it's, it's 21. So I have another folder here. So whenever an app downloads, a, a phone downloads my app that is running Lollipop, it's only going to download this XML file as opposed to this one. So this code. So what, what happens when version 22 comes out? Um, well, version 22, it, it doesn't come out in, in like just the next version. Like when between uh, Lollipop and uh, uh, KitKat, it was um, was it 18 to 21, right? So it doesn't it doesn't just come out every incremental version. It's like uh, the next big OS version is the is the version that you want to deal with. So what if your app doesn't have to go to the folder for that? Well, it would always go to the oldest one. So basically, you want to start generally first, like how I did, and then get more specific for the, for the other features and the other OSs. It will fall back to the one years before it. Right. So okay. Right, yeah. So I didn't have this before. And if I was running this on any other version that didn't have this version 21, I would just be using that one. The next one is 25 or whatever. So it would just run your 21. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, exactly. So if if I didn't specify an MDPI and a, and a phone was running X HDPI, it would just go. It would, it would, yeah. Well, I guess it would just go back to the oldest one. If if I wasn't, if I didn't have any of these and it wasn't X SHDPI uh, phone, it would just go back to the oldest version, or the the best the best thing it, it can interpret for that for that device. Um, but yeah, so. You can see here that to be kind of clever about it and trying to re reuse your code as much as you can. So the older layout folder here, I'm I'm uh, inheriting from this style right here, the base image button, which you can see right here. So I have this base image button, and then in my um, my new spiffy, spiffy um, lollipop version, it's inheriting from this uh, fav button. It's I can't remember what that what that stands for. Um, but uh, yeah, exactly. Right. So <laughs> exactly. 
fun. Yeah. So if you know, if you notice, um, it, it works the same way in these in these values folder, these values folders, right? So I have a base values folder and I have a values folder that's specific for version 21, which is the one that the Lollipop um, phone is going to be running. So I have a specific style sheet that's referenced to this version 21, which is the one I'm looking at right here, which has the style of the fab button. And I'm inheriting from the older style sheet of uh, base image button that came in the standard one. So like the uh, general idea of the way this button should look is in like my standard generic style sheet. But then of the stuff that isn't supported in that, in that API version, I have it in a separate, separate style sheet. This uh, elevation um, in, the, in the background drawable ripple doesn't, isn't supported in the, uh, in the uh, KitKat. So yeah, that's basically how you support different um, API versions. It's uh, something that, yeah, so this, uh, this drawable ripple isn't supported. So you can see, if, you, if I go to this layout, it tells me that it requi requires API level 21. It's not going to error out because I have it within this uh, specific folder. Cool? All right, let's see where we are. Okay, um, so I'm very, it's uh, kind of hard to use intents in this, uh, in this uh, um, VM that I'm using. So I just made it, I'm gonna make it use, a, use an activity, but we'll just, uh, this, generally what intents are used for is that it's used to re request an action from somewhere else. It can start an activity, a service, a broadcast. It basically can access data or, or other apps on your, on your device. So if you wanna use the camera, the gallery, um, things like that. If you want to use another app, uh, um, not necessarily Facebook or something like that, but like sharing pictures between apps, this is what you do for it. Um, not there yet. So if we go back to here. Um, go back. Run this thing again. Whoa. So it should run this again. I think this button should make me launch a new activity. So basically what I'm telling it to do is like, okay, this is this is this would be like a general idea of like this is one piece of functionality of my app, the beginning page, and then this button right here would bring me to the second page of the next idea or whatever you're trying to do within your app. And you to do that you do an intent. And a quick example of that is in here. So in this on on click listener, I remove my toast, and you say, oh, I want to make an intent. And uh, you get the context again. You specify wh what you want it, where you want it to go. You start an activity. You call, it, you call that. And uh, remember how I referenced the uh, manifest before? Since I have a new activity, I have to make sure it's in the manifest, which it is right here. So you can see how I just launched a new activity. I have another set of Java code. For that, it has its own layout, which doesn't have anything in it because I just want a simple example. But yeah, so that is how you use intents. Um, yeah, it's. I was gonna try to do an example of like at an image gallery, but using this Jenny Motion emulator, it just doesn't work. Um, so yeah, sorry. <laughs> but uh, let's check this out. So Gradle is um, one of the last pieces to talk about here. Um, it's again, it's it's a build tool. It uses Groovy syntax, which is basically like um, uh, it's based on Java. Um, it's used to, ma mainly to use manage libraries, but you, but it's a really powerful build tool. You can use it to to deal with uh, build variants, product flavors. So if you want to build your app and have it be different colors based upon you know the different uh, like. Uh, arguments you send it, you can do all that stuff here. You can, you know, different uh, variables between your demo, your production. That's all. That's how you deal with it all here. So, a quick example of why you might need that is, let's say here in my Java, I have my on-click listener here that I did this before. 
And uh, let's say, you know, they have a lot of the code completion, but it, sh it shouldn't. So I'm going to say that I'm going to try to use this uh, async uh, library. So it's called async HTTP client. And, you, and basically, by, by the simple thing that it's not helping me complete it, I, I have a pretty good idea that I can't access this, right? So if I go back to here, I'll show you the way that the Gradle file looks. Um, this one. So this is the way your Gradle file looks um, out, out of the box. Um, you tell it the SDK version you're trying to support, your SDK version, your, your uh, version code, all your versioning goes here. This is where your different build types, your different product flavors will go. I don't have a whole lot here right now, but the main part you use it for is your dependencies. If you want to add a new library that you're trying to support, so like that async HTTP um, thing that I was trying to use before. So I can throw in, well, not this part. So now I can tell it, hey, I want, I want access to this library. Um, before this, um, managing libraries was a big pain in the butt. Um, in iOS development, they're using CocoaPods nowadays. And uh, it's, this, it's basically the same thing, but this is something that Android Studio is really supporting now. Um, so, you, so you know what, um, where, to, where to get this code from, um, which version that you want to use, and all that good stuff. So it should tell me up here, if you can see it, Gradle file has been changed. You should uh, sync. So I'm going to do that. OK, so now I go back to where I was before. And now I want to use this async HTTP client. And now I have access to it because now the library is synced with my project. So now I can do everything that I want to do with it. And yeah, so that's basically how it works. This is, this is a really cool um, library used to, um, it, it basically deals with all your async um, requests. You don't have to deal with threading because it handles it for you. Um, Instagram uses it. Um, I'm using it on a new project I'm working on right now. Um, Do you know where it grabs those libraries from? Uh, Maven. It is, it's using like Maven Central? Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, um, so it's all maintained there. Um, basically, this, this here's all the links of the stuff that I was talking about so far. Um, we're only like 30 mi 35 minutes in, so I was gonna. Sh I wanted to show something else. David, you mind hitting the Chromecast? So this is kind of what um, I guess kind of motivated me to get something done for the Massive Code Conference because I really wanted something to show on the App Store. Um, some, at a project that I'm actively working on. It's uh, basically a food truck app. Um, so it's pretty bare bones. I mainly made this so that I could learn uh, Ruby's on, Ruby on Rails because it's a big thing that we use at work. And um, oh, oh, don't do that. <laughs> okay, so um, I've written all the Ruby on Rails services myself so far. Um, it's very simple. All it does is that it pulls down locations of the food trucks that are nearest to you, and you can navigate to them. Um, so you can click here and say, you know, you can see the stuff that I pulled down from some such and such server. Um, and then if you can see on the bottom right there, there's a navigate button. And it should work, hopefully. Start the location. Start navigating. Head north towards Cedar Street, then turn right onto Cedar Street. Okay. Sorry, I wasn't planning on that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it give, it'll give you the location. You know, it'll navigate you to the closest food truck of what you're trying to do. Um, I can kind of show you how. Well, I guess. Uh, so you know, I'm not lying about where it's pulling in your my location or not the location, but the food trucks themselves. 
we can look up come on Oh. Well, oh. Well, normally you could be able to see my laptop though, still, right? My screen won't wake up. Okay. Well. No, I just I just unconnected it. Sometimes mine doesn't wake up, right? Max, man, I tell you. <laughs> oh wait, come back, come back. Okay, so you can see, so this pin is where we are right here, right? That's accurate. So, if, so what's close to us? Let's look at pipeline. So let's, I'm just uh, Googling the address of the pipeline bar that we're next to. And I am updating it on the server that I've written. Look at this. Add this here. One second. So I added a uh, tr truck via my web service, my Ruby on Rails service that I've written. And I should theoretically be able to hit this refresh button and it should come up, maybe. Oh, hey, there it is. And I click on that and it says, hey, that's where, that's where the pipeline bar is. And it says, hey, mold meetup on it. But yeah, um, yeah, so my idea is uh, for the Nebraska Code Conference, maybe go over a little bit of like app submission, maybe, if that's interesting to people. Um, this isn't. What's that? I would do more life cycle stuff. Life cycle stuff? Yeah, because I, I think that's an important part that, that people aren't going to understand just off the bat. How okay. Life cycle yeah, yeah. I'll activity, right? that, could, that could show like how, why that offers Zoom. Yeah. That's called, you know, just tipping your screen one way or the other. I, I, I was just uh, like thinking about that and, and like, you know, people that don't know Android development from the very beginning, when you start talking about the activity life cycle, they'll be like, I don't even know what you're talking about. But I think it's good, but like, like that was a good point they don't even think about, right? Like people that might know something and not, may not realize that like turning the screen completely re-renders the view. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, calls that on resume again. You know, stuff like that when you talk about life cycle, it, just at least high level, I think. Yeah. yeah. That this is this is the way things are going to happen. You're going to get an on create, then an on resume, then an on view load, then a view did load, then a that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, well, if you if we want to switch back over to the uh, yeah. my laptop, I can show you the way this the Ruby on Rails code looks too, or not the Ruby on Rails code, but the the Trucks app itself. Um, yeah, it's I have this. It's pretty simple, but uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> please. In your in on your especially when you're if you're going to mirror your device, you can turn on uh, the. Uh, the press events or whatever, so that they can see where you're. Oh, you're oh yeah. I like it. You can do it for all. Well, you can do it in any. You can do it in any of the devices, but yeah. Making it's notes. Really, it's really good for when you're presenting, yeah. like on a mirrored screen. You might want to lock your screen too. Yeah. One rotation. Good um, notes. Making people dizzy sometimes. <laughs> Especially depending on how well you. Your yeah. <laughs> yeah, but any yeah anything anything that um w w you want more detail on, especially people that are newer, mm -hmm. I'd appreciate. What was the deal when you added the image button and laid it on top of the label? Like by default, I oh. would assume they would have been side by Maybe side or underneath each, each other. Layout instead of a real, relative layout. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that's basically that's that's the only reason why. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is this is honestly my first time running through it from beginning to end. So I. Uh, yeah, you only get an hour, right? Yep. Because <laughs> you're not too far away. You're really, if you got an hour, you really only want a presentation that's going to run you 45 minutes. Yeah, I just didn't know like what people were interested in other things. So like, you think like the layouts of like how the layout works more? Yeah, I think it'd be nice. Like, start with the relative because that's what you get by default. 
but then show look it's laid over top. If I change this to a linear layout, then they're gonna lay out underneath them, and then you can just let people know there are different types of layouts. Yeah, just high and level maybe. Yeah, was, you don't need to go into each of them. But. And I was reading some places where actually some of the tutorials I was doing, they said they're actually trying to get away from linear layouts. Yeah, because the relative is going to lay out more like HTML lays out a little bit. Like it's a little bit more, so it's more flexible when you have screen size changes and stuff. I can't imagine them going away from linear layout. Linear they're not going to get. Is what everybody uses. They say, they say, yeah, they're saying linear layout is way too overused. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you have to give nested, crazy nested views, but. It's yeah. really easy if you just it's want stuff to be on top of each other. Yeah, it's simple. Uh, yeah. Super yeah. simple to do. But it doesn't, as your screen size changes, that's when the linear layout starts to break down. Like when yeah. I want to slide something up into the right yeah. versus down below it. This is, um, this is what that we were talking about. So your relative layouts, so everything is uh, stacked on top of each other. So um, basically, um, you start on the top left corner. So everything that you add is going to be on the top left, unless you start um, giving it some extra parameters. So um, the the text view, like you mentioned, is on the top left because I um, I that's where it comes to, um, right straight out of the box. And this button that I added, um, is going to do the same thing. So as of right now, the way this the way this button is, it's not it's just going to be around top of that same box, same one. So I'm not even sure what this home description is, but I'm going to put it in there. Um, so right now, these buttons are going to be right on top of each other. But then you can start specifying like the, uh, the layout, um, bottom, end, parent right, parent stop, stop, below, all the good stuff, center and parent, center, and stuff like that. Uh, your margins, your padding, all that stuff. So I can just say center, um, oop. Center horizontal, and that should hopefully make it go where I want it to be. Yeah. So there it is. Yeah. So the like like uh, like I said, this design view is 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 good for quick and dirty things like this. But if you want to like look at radio and gradients on top of linear gradients on top of linear gradients, you don't want to do that. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't render it that well. It'll start throwing errors at you. And you can set that button up. The relative layout lets you set that button relative to something else that's on the screen. So I want the top of my button to be at the bottom of my label, if you wanted to do that, and then center, or whatever else you want to do. That's what's the relative layout is very powerful. It's a really nice layout to use, but it's a lot more specifying of parameters versus like the linear that the next thing will always just be next. Just a stack. Yeah. Like next thing below it is it goes below it. Or you can make it go to the right of it, uh, but the whole, everything in the linear layout follows that pattern, either to the right or below it. Yeah. But do you have to do it in XML? Is yes. There no, there's no mode where you can drag and drop. You, can do, it you, can, you can do it in the design view. But it's, it's designers best on half. Yeah. And it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, if you were going to do this, you could do this in designer. Once you get any type of like complex putting things together. There's just too many different ways to possibly kind of lay stuff out. Yeah. It, so it works. It yeah. just like, if you want it to be exactly how you want it, it kind of gets it done. It's yeah. going to kind of assume, oh, you want this 300 pixels from the right bar. Well, it's going to always do that everywhere. So, we're, we're so like that, that's what it will look like if he builds it right now. So it, it does work, <laughs> well, but it's just, it just kind of painfully, yeah, eventually, typical Android you'll start switching. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's how Google specifies it. Everything needs to be put in a scroll view. There's just a ton of things to set. Cause really, what you should be setting is kind of left and right margins or padding or relativity and top and bottom relativity and and all this kind of stuff. And when you start doing that in the designer, it's just a real pain. It's yeah. And you'll notice that like when I threw all those things in there, just like while we were talking, it actually added all this, all the XML in there too. So you can kind of just throw it in there and try to get a good idea of how it's supposed to look. Yeah. Yeah. And then it'll, and then it'll, and then it gives you, I mean, it gives you all these like, like margins based upon like the, the guidelines that you threw in. Cause if you notice when I said this, then all those guidelines pop out, all those relate to like margins and layout lefts, rights, whatever's, you know. So well, the, what Mark showed about when he did that fat button and everything and it inherited, you can do that inheritance without actually creating something. So like you can create, here's my base button, 
and this is the style and what it looks like, and you put that in a separate file, and you can always inherit that on every button that you put in, and it always starts the same thing. So these are the general things I want. I wanted to have five pixels of padding to the left and five to the right. I want it to be orange. I want it to be text like this. I want all those things. Then I can just inherit that button. When I create a new image button, parent is my base button that has all this stuff, and then all I have to do is tweak whatever might be different, what it's relative to, any of that. But you could even go even more high level. You can say all image buttons uh, use this style, and uh, it, it'll automatically do that for you as well. So it's basically the style of like a CSS style sheet or whatever. But and Mike Mark mentioned a little bit of something about that, where he just he went pretty quick on it. But when you create a new layout, there's actually like follow the style, and it was a the base built in. Mm -hmm. Android style that you picked one, but there's a couple of built-in styles as well as you could create your own complete style, like a theme. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could create your own theme, yeah. and then everything will automatically follow that unless you override it. Yeah. Oops. <coughs> so the reason why a button looks a certain way when you just throw a button on the screen is because it's following that that style. Yeah, I think I have some stuff in here. And so how many applications are we looking at here to build this? Uh, so Ruby mine, I'm thinking Oh. You know, um so, so yeah, sorry, there's a lot of stuff that I'm I'm dealing with here. Yeah, you just gotta deal with all of it. Um <laughs> Okay, so um Android so Android Studio is what I'm using to build the Android app. So um, if I'm not dealing with a service, if I'm if that is what is going to be ran on a phone, right? Um, this Jenny Motion is is what my emulator is. Like I mentioned that it, it, this is my VM, my dealing with my VM, and uh, this is th what I'll switch doing over here. This, I'll just switching between between my pre-made code bases just for my presentation, and then uh, Ruby Mine is where I built my uh, my 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 uh, server for my trucks app. So it, it was just there. I probably should have closed that, but yeah. It's there. Um, Ruby Mine and, in, and Android Studio are actually the same application that was built on IntelliJ. That's yeah. the base underneath them. They're just a skinned and coded IDE for language to language. So. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, um, I just want to mention, uh, my, I, I have a GitHub account where that the, uh, the really simple, quick and dirty uh, beginning to Android app is on there. Um, the actual, the entire Ruby on Rails service for my trucks um, thing is there. And then the, my entire app for the, uh, the trucks app in general. So if you want to see how that map works, any of that stuff is all there. So you can look at how I actually did the, the uh, different styles for the different OSs. It's all there. So just go check it out. Um, yeah, go for it. How many lines of code is the trucks app? It's not a lot, actually, surprisingly. Um, just because I'm really good at coding. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, where am I? Where are you getting the data from? The data? For the individual trucks. Oh, yeah. Are you just having to pull that from different places? As of right now, it's basically a dummy um, Ruby on Rails service that I've written. So this is this is this is all, this is all it is. Um, I I've, I've been working on this on the side. Um, all, all you really do is you add a truck. So what I, all I did was I Googled a location, and then I threw it in. Uh, I can talk about this for just like a quick, quick second. So let's talk. Let's. What else is? What else? Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I'll do that. Sure, 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 sure. Sorry. Okay. So we're looking at this is my uh, main activity here for the food truck app. Um, it's about 285 lines of code. Which isn't a lot. Um, I could probably move some of the stuff and do like a service because this is like actually um, this is better location stuff. I completely yanked off of the Google developer um, uh, development forums. Uh, they actually, yeah, it, this this is an algorithm to figure out what's the best location because you can get a, a location based upon a lot of different uh, granularity. So like, it's really granular if they pull it off of Wi-Fi, but it's less gran granular if they pull it off of GPS. Um, so this algorithm, I, I yanked off their website, and it basically uh, helps you figure that out, which one's the, the better location. So this is just to keep track of what my location is. 
Um, this is my how you deal with uh, yeah your, your lo location actually changing, and then um, this is this is how I'm actually accessing that uh, my my Ruby on Rails server. So I kind of I really really didn't t talk about it at all, but that a that async HTTP um, library is how I'm using this uh, trucks REST client. So if you go in here, I basically have this async HTTP client that's doing simple like gets from my server. Um, all I'm doing is passing the context and the U and the URL of my of the local IP that I'm using right now, and um, yeah, I'm I'm taking the JSON when it comes back and throwing it into an array. That's all it's really doing right now. Um, I really wanted to want to get something on the App Store by the time Jurassic Code Conference comes up, which is in two weeks. We'll see. But uh, yeah. So how about your food truck, uh, food truck drop Java and then the truck rest client? How long are those? Thirty-eight and oh, thirty-five. Yeah. That's right. I think that's a great idea. Put it up on the like yeah. People love that. People that are just starting out, especially programmers. <laughs> so you could maybe tell them that at the beginning of the talk if people wanted to just kind of browse. But uh, I love it. I, that's really cool. Yeah. It's all, it's all up there. OK, so I'll, I guess I'll talk about what the, the service. So um, what else is close to here that we can see on this map? Sure. Walmart. Is it this one? No. It's not on here. What's going on? Um, where is my location? Oh, there it is. Okay. So, um, the idea of this—it's going to get a lot cleaner. Obviously, basically, whenever a I'm I'm going to try to talk some local food trucks, get them to make accounts, get them to up, update the location. <laughs> the um, end idea is that I actually just figured out authorization through Twitter. So if they update through here, I'll be able to post their Twitter accounts for them, so I can save them time. Which uh, Credit goes out to Carl from uh, Naked Apartments. He helped me figure that out. But uh, he's not here. But uh, so I go to Add Truck. I'm going to talk about the Walmart food truck. And it's, hey, it's Walmart. And uh, all I do is add in the, the address. And uh, this should work, hopefully. Um, maybe, I, I think it should be able to, I'm, so I'm using the geocoder gem. Um, and it should be able to figure it out from here. I, don't, I shouldn't have to put in the latitude. latitude, latitude. I, Hopefully, we'll see if this works. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So it's there, and uh, it, it's added to my list of trucks. Um, if we go back to the uh, to my actual app itself, which there we are. So I'm I specify my. The uh, server that I'm hitting, which is my local machine, this is where I'm running the server, and I'm just pulling down a simple list of where the uh, trucks come from. So if that answers your question at all, but yeah. Um, Ruby on Rails meetup uh, happens at Agape Red. Go to it. It's on meetup.com. That's where I learned how to do that part. So check it out. Anything else? I think that's it, guys. <laughs>